Hello, friends. So recently, I got a house plant for my apartment. It's been great having it around. Sometimes things get a little quiet during the day. And so, as some of you may know, I'm a little chatty. Actually, I should say a pretty, an overly chatty person. And so, sometimes I don't always have someone to talk to. So instead, I end up talking to my house plant. Our conversations are admittedly a little one-sided. And, as you can expect, I'm the one doing pretty much all the talking. But he, at least, I think it's a he, has turned out to be a great listener. He never seems to get bored when I tell him what's on my mind, for hours on end. I can't really describe it, but I swear, I can tell by his demeanor he's listening intently and even seems to share in my emotions, smiling when I tell a happy story and crying when I share a sad one. Now, I've had house plants before, but we've never really hit it off the way this plant and I have. To me, this new plant is proof that plants do have personalities, just like humans and animals. Now, anyway, I told her this to my friend Eric, who's a professional etymologist with a PhD in linguistics, unlike me who just kind of dabbles in it. And anyway, he quickly poo-pooed my theory by telling me not only that plants don't have personalities, but also they don't even have souls. What? How can he be so sure? Well, he explained, etymologically, there's one clear difference between animals like us humans and plants like this friend you've been telling me about. You see, we clearly have souls. In fact, all animals do. The word animal itself is descended from anima, which meant soul in Latin. And which, incidentally, is also the ancestor of the word soul in many modern languages, such as the French âme, the Spanish and Portuguese alma, and of course the Italian anima. Interestingly, it is also the ancestor of the Romanian inima, which also means soul, but more commonly refers to the heart, which, to me at least, seems like a good place for the soul to be. Now, aside from evolving into words meaning soul in modern languages, the Latin anima gradually developed into the adjective animalis, or literally living. And from there eventually emerged the noun animal, which of course is the ancestor of our own word. Oh, and as you might also guess, logically enough, anima, through the associated verb animare, is also the ancestor of animate and animate, the English verb and adjective, respectively. And yeah, not only do animals clearly have souls, but they also breathe, as evidenced for example in animal's original ancestor, hen, a Proto-Indo-European verb root meaning to breathe. So yes, says my friend, while animals are very lively, soulful, breathing creatures, plants, well, they're none of those things. In fact, according to one prevalent theory, the noun plant, through the Latin verb plantare, comes from planta, or literally, sole of the foot. As in, when you plant the plant, so to speak, you put soil all around it with the sole of your foot. So really, he concluded, plants are all about dirt and the bottom of your foot. They have nothing to do with breathing or with souls, and they definitely don't have personalities. Wow, okay. That was kind of a rant. I don't know why my friend is such a plant hater. Perhaps he had a negative experience with one at some point? And actually, scientifically at least, plants actually do breathe. So there's that. My friend might be an expert etymologist, but when it comes to science, he's definitely, if I may say, pretty green. And etymologically, well, perhaps he's right. Plants may not be as lively and as soulful as animals, and perhaps they don't in fact have souls, but they're still great housemates. And, most importantly, when you need someone to listen to your sometimes long and confusing etymological ramblings, they're always there for you. Isn't that right, friend? Thanks for watching.